Nearly 4,000 first-time undergraduate students enrolled at the University of Oregon in fall 2010. Only 22% were ethnic minorities, but looking at the university as a whole, only 16% are students of color. U of O student Curtis Johnson says he feels the pressure of being black, especially when he's only here to learn. It's like, okay, I'm, I can do something besides just sports or whatever. Like, I can't actually uh, be a student and learn. So, but that's the stereotype of all black people on campus just on some type of sports team. So, I mean, I get it all the time. And students of color face other pressures as well. I want to be an example. So I do feel like there is some pressure from people in my community to show that African Americans can uh, hold a strong standing in the university. Behind these faces is an ongoing concern about a perceived lack of diversity on a campus that boasts dedication to international awareness and acceptance of individual identity. U of O President Richard Lerivier says students from different backgrounds strengthen the educational quality of the institution. If you don't have diversity, and I'm not talking just about race and ethnicity, uh, diversity tends to be a code word for those, those things, but I'm talking about socioeconomic status, life experience, gender, uh, sexual orientation, the whole thing. If you, the richer the diversity of a student body, the better the quality of the education. The Office of Institutional Equity and Diversity, or OIED, focuses on community outreach and recruitment. OIED Assistant Vice President Carla Gary hopes aggressive outreach will help students as early as middle school get ready for college. There is a, a program that is reaching out to um, started in Latino community, Native American, African American community. It will move into um, Asian American communities to look at talking to community about preparing students, being partners with the school district, with University of Oregon in preparing students to look at college as not just possible, but for them. Even the Clark Honors College is partnering up with high schools in a program called Oportunidades or Opportunities. Recently hired diversity coordinator Angel Durantes says even the brightest students need to learn how to learn. Tutoring, mentoring programs that uh, can facilitate continuous interaction between high school students to be able to match them up with college students to address any issues related to academic performance, um, better study skills, time management skills. All of those things have a lot to do with the uh, graduation rate so that when they're ready, you know, they would be ready to come to here or to other universities. It appears the five-year-old OIED initiative is having an effect. It may be the cause of a 72% increase in new freshmen of color between fall 2005 and 2009, compared to an 11% increase during the five years prior. But Gary says it's hard to tell. It can mean lots of things from we're doing a better job of outreach and recruitment to we're doing a better job of identifying what keeps students here and what encourages or them to leave or discourages them from staying. It can be as random as um, suddenly the University of Oregon is getting so much PR because of sports. These numbers are reassuring, but OIED Vice President Charles Martinez says he doesn't want to aim for percentages. If we aspire to a percentage, we're basically embracing a system that's based on a quota. To bring the topic of diversity to the forefront, students and faculty meet once a month for diversity plan and action lunches. We felt like we needed a venue like the luncheons to, to c connect the individuals who are engaged in that work, the deans, faculty, staff, and students who are involved in that work to the broad themes that are related to the diversity plan so they could be sharing those successes and challenges with each other. The newest plan to diversify the university is shifting from the current admissions criteria, GPA, class rank, and scholastic aptitude test scores to instead reviewing the overall profile of the student. And the person in charge is Vice Provost for Enrollment Management, Roger Thompson. Really what we're trying to do is create a university uh, that will prepare students for the 21st century. And in the 21st century workplace, uh, you have diversity of, of all kinds. Thompson is targeting fall 2012 as a deadline to revise the current U of O enrollment application. His second goal? To redesign outreach to high schools with emerging Latino populations. I've been out. Uh, in many high schools around the state of Oregon. You know, my goal has been to be in 140 high schools 
uh, this year. Le Riviere believes this kind of outreach builds community. We also want to send a message to potential students that this place is really special. It's about who you are as an individual and what you can do and what your passions are. And that's what we're interested in, in making the determination of whether you should be admitted or not. As for the Honors College, admission relies on essays and letters of recommendation when reviewing applications. But Durantes says the cost of tuition may be a major deterrent for first-generation students and students from low socioeconomic status. Aglaishka Rencounter feels that the U of O offers many scholarships to Native Americans. I feel like there's some love from the U of O to us. But she says working at Oregon Hall, the hub of financial aid and scholarships, has given her an advantage. If I hadn't gotten that job and I was just bumbling around, and I didn't know those resources existed, I might feel differently. Tori Kendrick says scholarships are geared towards black athletes. She says she's struggling to make it on her own. Like all of my tuition is paid for by loans and it's hard because you're trying to go to school, pay for your own schooling, and then you're trying to get a job on campus as well. So it's just a lot of things that uh, accumulate to making it hard for us to stay here. So I do think there should be more scholarships for us. We definitely, as an institution within the Honors College and the university as a whole, need to be more creative and come up with, especially, uh, come up with more scholarship options. You know, there, it's always, especially with the cost of tuition going up, there's just not enough. There's just not enough. We need to do more. With Brad Green, this is Lorianne Osio reporting for Oregon Extra.